Education Association. a shooting star and sail away perhaps one day he'll come your way bonjour mon ami you remember I told you about the little prince who can fly all about the university and how he rides the flaming comets to many most fascinating places in space n'est-ce pas spiral galaxies and black holes Past quasars and pulsars and the constellations we have never even heard about. Well, so now I will tell you how this all first came about, just as the little prince told it to me. Far, far out in space, beyond our solar system, beyond the Milky Way, beyond the Crab Nebula, where millions upon millions of stars twinkle and all sorts of alien planets spin about them. There is this one very small planet, so small that astronomers have not even given it a name. It is called only B612. And on this small world, there is room for only one house. Well, part of a house, en fait. But to the little prince, it is a castle, and he rules here all alone. <sighs> Still, he does have many loyal and happy subjects that greet him every morning. Good morning, Sir Lamb. Beautiful day, isn't it? Good morning, butterflies. Nice of you to drop in. Good morning, flowers. You're up awfully early. You don't have to bow. I abolished that. Good morning, water. You're looking bright. My volcanoes! I forgot to tell them good morning. They'll erupt. It's time to get to work on all the things a prince has to do to rule a whole planet by himself. It'll be another busy day. Cooking three meals a day over a couple of hot volcanoes is hard work. But I know you have to start the day with a good breakfast. Oops! I wish my stoves weren't so far apart. Oh! I think it's done. It looks good. Ah, oh, breakfast. Fit for Prince. So that is how the little prince starts off each day. And it is very hard work, we. Afterward, he always takes a morning nap because there is a great deal more he must still do, you see. Again, 
<laughs> hey there, little buddy. What you doing, huh? I say, what you doing, huh? Hi there. Where did you come from? <laughs> you had to ask. I'm going to tell you. I come from all over, all over space. Who and what are you? I'm a Swift, a space Swift. But you can call me Swifty, little buddy. I'm the little prince. Hooray. And, like, where do you do all your little princing? Right on this planet. It's called B612, and I'm the ruler of everything in this whole world. Well, we all gotta start someplace. I kinda hate to bring this up, Your Royal Highness, but your world looks sort of empty, <laughs> if you know what I mean. It's not empty at all. Just look around. Well, you got a nice piece of a castle there. Not bad. But did you ever think of doing a little traveling? Visit some other planets, maybe? Me? Visit other planets? Hey, you'd have a ball, little buddy. You ought to see the king on the planet next door to you. He's a real gas. And you want to go to planet Septra. That's a blast. Nothing but a lot of goofy little green men there. Orion's a nice place to visit, but I wouldn't want to live there. And don't pass up Earth. That's my favorite planet. Ooh, wait till you see Disneyland. Wonderful. I never thought of leaving my planet before. But how could I ever get to all those places? Hey, that's no big deal, little buddy. You can do anything you want if you just put the old bean to work. If you can't learn to fly like me, well, there's more than one way of skinning the cat, like they say. <laughs> Maybe you can catch one of those flaming comets that are always streaking by here. Catch a comet? Wow, they're fast! All you gotta do is get up there and latch on. And they'll whisk you off to big adventures. Really? It'd be awful nice. Nothing to it. If you miss one, there's another one right behind it. You just gotta be quick. <laughs> If you get lucky, you might go clean beyond the Milky Way. There's a new comet that'll take you way out to the great Sagittarius star cloud. Runs every Thursday. And remember how I told you about Earth? Why, who haven't been in it lately? You've been there, little buddy. You just think about traveling. Sleep on it tonight. in the morning till after I get a good big breakfast. No time to fix breakfast, Swifty. My new plant needs me. Plant? That's important. You can't pass up breakfast for that. Maybe it's just a weed. It's a flower. Ha, ah, big deal. Man, I can see you sure need to get away on a little vacation. Right now, this is more important. Some folks are kind of flaky. I think maybe it's going to be a beautiful rose bush. Didn't I get to you at all? Don't you want a little excitement? A new flower is exciting, Swifty. I thought about everything you said, but there are so many things here that need me and depend on me. I couldn't just take off and leave them. Well, looks like it's time for me to cut out. I enjoyed meeting you. You think some more about getting out and seeing the universe. I'll be back. So long, old buddy. Ooh. Ow! It really is a rose bush. Don't tease the rose bush. It's our new friend. I'm going to take very good care of you. 
And so the little prince slept all night beside his new rose bush and dreamed happily of how beautiful it would be. Ah, but he did not know what a great surprise it would have for him the next day. The little prince was only hoping his new rose would be red, but it was going to be much, much more than that. Voila! Good morning! Oh! Morning would never come. Where am I? Am I growing in your garden? You're beautiful. Thanks. I never expected you. I wasn't exactly expecting you either. <laughs> you never know. Still. Yes? I do hope you like roses. Oh, yes. Good. I've had an awfully long trip, and I'm very thirsty. I know you'll like this water. Oh! Stop! Stop! I said I wanted a drink, not a shower bath. You have to water my roots. Oh, I didn't know. I'm very sorry. It's an understandable mistake. Oh, that's very refreshing. I needed that. Flowers are you planting over there? No flowers. I'm cleaning out my volcanoes. Oh, is that all? I thought you might be doing something important. It is important. If I don't keep them cleaned out every day, they might erupt. I see. There, now they won't erupt. I might erupt if you ignore me all the time. I didn't mean to. Would you like me to clean you too? How? Why? Where? I think I'll just wait for the next rain shower. Thank you. Huh? <laughs> I'll try to make you happy, but I have an awful lot of things to do here. Well, if they're more important. But they're not. It just seems to me if you're a real prince and you rule this whole world, and I'm the most attractive rose on your planet. You're the only rose on this planet. That wasn't very tactful. I hope I didn't make a mistake in coming here. I could have grown on any planet I wished, you know. There was one that was all covered with lovely trees and babbling streams, and I really thought of going there, but... You couldn't have seen other worlds. You were just born from a seed right here. <laughs> I have a bad cough. Your planet is so cold. Have a good sleep. Good night, my pretty rose girl. I'll see you in the morning. She's awfully vain and she is demanding, but so pretty. Hi, Swifty. Nice to see you again. Hey, little buddy. Just made it back from a cruise out to the Big Dipper. Cool, baby. Cool. You ought to see some of those places before they're overrun with tourists. I would like to visit other planets, Swifty. I'd like to see new places and meet interesting new friends. Then why don't you chuck it all and buzz off, man? I've got new responsibilities now. You can always find a reason for putting something off. You gotta leave your planet now and then, broaden your mind, make you grow, man. You can dig an irrigation ditch to your rose so she'd have water, clean the volcanoes out good to last a few days, and I could drop in kinda regular to check on everything for you. Maybe I could go. You'll be 
be all right. Little Prince, I'm suffocating and I need water. I'm coming. I'll get you some water. I'm sorry I slept so late. Don't worry. Just hang on. The water isn't doing any good. I thought you were thirsty. It's this big glass thing over me. I can't get any water and I can't get any air. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's a relief. I can breathe. I'll have a drink now, please. You're really sweet. Thanks. But now you'll be leaving this planet and me. Oh, I heard you talking to that bird. I hope you'll be happy wherever you go. I've been silly, I know. I don't blame you for leaving, really. Think of me sometimes, will you? I'll always think of you. And I'll only be gone for a little while. You'll find another big world with wonderful people and beautiful flowers. And you'll forget all about me and this poor little planet. Oh, no, I wouldn't. You're just like all men, footloose and fancy free. I'm not fancy free. I'll come back soon, honest. Well, I won't be here. Oh. No, no. Oh. 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 You can't. Oh. Oh. You have sharp claws like a tiger. But I know you didn't really mean to hurt me. Of course, I love you. It's my fault you haven't known it before. Hey, little buddy. I got a big scoop for you. Hey, pal. Want to hear some good news? Want to hear it, huh? Oh, what's got you down, little buddy? Bad. Real downer. It's my Rose Girl. She's mad at me because I plan to leave the planet. She just doesn't understand. I told her I'd be coming back, but I don't think she believes me. That's a bummer. Well, maybe you ought to stay. No, I've made up my mind. I'm going to travel. You told me about all the wonderful things in the universe. Yeah, yeah, right on. But I don't want you to feel bad about leaving home. You told me how I could take good care of my planet and not worry while I'm gone. Well, I'm going to take your good advice, Swifty. <laughs> You're coming through loud and clear, little buddy. I got the whole deal figured out for you. Some buddies of mine, a few wild geese, will be dropping by to help you take off. Thanks, Swifty. You're a real good friend. You'll have to get along without me for a while. That's why I'm cleaning you so well. You don't have to worry about water while I'm gone, and Swifty will look in on you every night to see that you're all covered up and warm. Now, I don't want you teasing the pretty rose girl while I'm gone, here. There's nothing more I can think of to do. Everything will be just as good as if I were here. You won't be lonesome with all the butterflies and caterpillars and things. I'll see you soon. Maybe tomorrow. You'll never come back. I know it. I promise I'll be back. No, you'll forget all about our little world, and I'll just spend the rest of my life under this glass jar. OK. I suppose I'll have to put up with these butterflies, too since you seem to think they're so very beautiful. Oh, 
well, don't linger like this. You've decided to go away, so go. Oh. I'll be back before you know it. Goodbye. Coming in for a landing. Got you a good crew. They've logged over 10,000 hours. You ready to blast off, little buddy? Okay, here's the scoop. Now, you're gonna catch a comet, but they move fast, man, so the first thing we gotta do is get you airborne, dig? You take this net to catch the comet, and we'll hoist you up into the wild blue yacht. I'm ready. Okay, ready for launching. Come on down, all you dudes. Lift off. It's the first time I've ever left home. Goodbye, B612. Bon voyage, little prince. I hope you have a safe trip to some exciting new world and meet fascinating new people. I know they'll love you. You got altitude now, little buddy. Get ready to catch one of those comets. Ready. Okay, catch one. Well, so that is how the little prince first learned to fly and take marvelous trips all over space. He loved the feeling of flying, of being free to explore the universe, to visit all the distant places he had only seen as small twinkles in the sky. Of course, he did not know to what exciting new world the comet was taking him on his first trip. Ah, but that is something we will learn next time, n'est-ce pas? You will join us then, bon ami? Au revoir.